Welcome back to the program. We're glad you've stayed with us. This is the big story right here on KTN News. In studio, I still have a lawyer, Mano Osea, Amnesty International Executive Director, Rungu Holton, as well as Shafi Hussein, who's the chairman of Nubian Rights Forum. Before we cross over to the issues surrounding Mao, because that's another area where thousands of people have already been evicted and the eviction is still going on. Let's finish with Kibra here. And Shafi, I'd like to hear your view on this. We're getting a lot of conflicting numbers coming out of Kibra. How many people have been affected so far? And I understand it's the month of July. Irunga has already pointed out it's cold. People are already out there. What are the other alternatives for the people of Kibra at the moment? Standing within the road corridor is about 30,000 people affected. Mm -hmm. And the only alternative we have is nothing rather than going back to court. It is only court which will salvage the people of Kibra because the government is behaving as if they are dumb, they cannot hear, forgetting that those people of Kibra and my friends in Mao, those are the overwhelming people who are voting, who have voted for the president and the deputy president in state house. Thank you, Shafi, for that. Now, let's shift focus to Mao, because I understand about 7,000 people have already been evicted uh, from there. It's a matter that has been highly politicized once again. And uh, Wakili, let me bring you into this uh, once again. These are people who've lived there. Of course, the government is saying that they're going to make sure that these people are, you know, flushed out because they have to save that uh, forest. But at the same time, they're not indicating in any way if they're going to compensate these individuals. What are the options for these people on the ground? I think, Hussein, uh, Yusuf, first it's important to appreciate that the eviction of Mao has been an issue uh, of so many years now. And uh, it, has, it, it is very clear that government has, wants to actually ensure the policy of res reserving our forest. And uh, this is because of, uh, you know, the recent research that showed that our forest cover is going down. And um, as you may have noticed, uh, Mao Forest is one of the big, it's actually the biggest forest cover that we have in, in the country. Mm -hmm. And the government has actually wants to ensure that there is no more human interference and it, it, in, into, into the Mao forest. I, I think the issue here is not compensation, but actually complying with the directives of government. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it will be an excuse. And I saw uh, this uh, Kipchumba Murkomen actually, uh, coming to defend the people within Mao Forest and stating that they have title deeds. You see, it's one thing to demonstrate that you have a title deed to a, land, a piece of land which has already been acquired by government for purpose of reservation. It's also another to actually approach court and actually get that right being appreciated. So I think the issue of uh, human rights comes in as to how the fiction is done but not to entitlement to that land. Because it's very clear from government that nobody should actually be within the Mao forest. Mm -hmm. So I think what needs to be done is to uh, the government to adhere to the principles of, 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 of human dignity yes. by actually ensuring that the evictions themselves are not depriving the people that dignity itself. Mm -hmm. they, they, there's, there's no need to burn houses because Kenyans have conscience. It's, it's, it's easy to actually tell a Kenyan to park and leave than to actually torch their houses and inflict pain by beating them up. So that, that is where the human rights or aspect mm. comes in. But yes. uh, stating uh, as to whether they have a, guarant a title to stay in that uh, premise that has already been earmarked for protection is uh, will be lying to the people on the ground. Mm -hmm. Speaking about the human rights issues there, let me bring it on once again to this. And uh, why does it seem the government, why does it seem like the government gets this thing wrong time and again? We've seen situation in Kibra, Gikomba, and now, and now in Mao, where people, people's houses are being literally being burnt down. I mean, I'd like to remind um, your viewers that um, this, you know, this is not the first uh, round of evictions. Um, in December 2017 and over January, we, as Amnesty, were very concerned about forced evictions that led to at least um, one death um, and several houses being or huts are being burnt uh, in Emberboot Forest, which is in El Gal Maraquet. 
And the forced evictions there led to the government losing a multi-million uh, dollar um, grant, which was very important for this country. And essentially, that was a grant that was coming from the European Union to support the reforestation of the, um, uh, the water towers, the Cherangani Hills uh, water towers. And I think you know, what we've seen this year is really an inability to move beyond a fortress mentality to conservation, which is essentially is remove uh, populations, even forest dwelling people and indigenous communities who are, you know, for, for many years are ancestral to those um, forests. You remove them for the forest in order to reforest rather than working with those communities that have done so for the, the last, you know, hundreds of years to um, ensure that they become allies in forestry. I mean, it is one thing to ask Kenyans to plant trees all over the country, mm -hmm. including um, in my, my ward, uh, Kilimani, but it's another thing to actually remove forest dwelling communities out of forests in order to, um, uh, you know, to, to conserve them. And that just does not make sense from a conservation perspective. Mm -hmm. I think the other concern has been that we are not learning from the task force that uh, was set up by uh, Cabinet Secretary Tobiko when he looked into what is the primary cause of deforestation. And one of the things that um, became very clear to that task force that it's not necessarily the communities, um, the smaller communities that are based in the forest, but actually there is uh, intensive commercial logging that's taking place with or without collusion from the Kenya Forestry Service personnel that were fired um, and prosecuted, uh, I think, a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to look at this in a broader context that um, we have to find a conservation strategy that involves people rather than um, expels them from that which uh, they have historically done. Mm -hmm. Now, Wakili, you've seen the situation in Maude. Of course, we're having a conversation around it. We've talked about Kibra already. Uh, Gikomba is another place that has been affected. What needs to be done to make sure that we have some sort of a proper you know, resettlement action plan in this country? Because we're seeing a lot of people being displaced. I, I think, Yusuf, we already have a proper resettlement plan. Mm -hmm. And as I stated earlier, there is a resettlement action plan, which was shared within the ministries that are concerned with issues to do with land and was agreed upon, such that if government wants to res uh, actually evict people from one place, then they ought to have a place for settlement of those people. Mm -hmm. I think that should be uh, should be a, con a concern that should uh, should be taken on by government. They have a responsibility if they think that the evictions itself, and from what we see, uh, it will it's going to cause uh, so many families lose their 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 home states and they'll, be, they'll not have a place to stay. So there is need to actually ensure that government uh, uh, puts on, uh, or rather gives these people a proper settlement elsewhere for purposes of actually respecting their dignity. I think their, their representatives, their political representatives, are not doing enough to actually uh, you know, advise these people as, as to what they need to do, because uh, I think for a political leader, you need to actually show your people what is supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. What the government is doing in Mau Forest is a national activity because we want to conserve uh, uh, the livelihoods of millions of Kenyans. And so there is that superior right to conserve the greater good as compared to the people reserving within, the, uh, within those forests. Mm -hmm. And so the government needs to balance between uh, you know, f uh, you know, conserving these forests at the same time, you know, respecting uh, the human dignity and the people who reside in those forests. Well said, well said, Wakili. Now, uh, let me get, uh, bring Irungu once again to this. And uh, we've already talked about uh, the people who've been displaced from Mao, about 7,000 of them. And Shafi says in Kibra, the number is about 30,000. And we talk ab we're talking about a government whose main agenda, one of the main agendas is, of course, housing. Isn't it a bit ironical? to deal with a government that is displacing people at the same time promising them you know, proper housing? No, I think anybody who looked at this uh, from outside the country would probably see this as an act of sabotage, mm -hmm. um, that you declare on one hand your intention and then um, other government departments uh, basically undermine that intention, leaving just confusion. And I think we need to be clear also that um, these are not just statistics. I mean, 10,000 
um, is, is a number, but behind every one of those 10,000 um, are individuals, are memories, are places of safety, are children who can't go to school, are people who can't meet their livelihoods now, people who are now looking for other government places to go and squat, uh, or are basically um, depleting the resources of their relatives because they need to move in with their relatives. So I think we need to be you know, very clear and, and brutally honest that behind all of this, are, are many, many stories of misery and um, you know, just a sense of betrayal. I mean, mm. I, I can't put it any clearer than that, that uh, when, when you purposely remove the very little that a community or a family has and do, do not give them uh, the alt, you know, alternatives, then what, do we, what, what, we must, what must we conclude by these actions? That these actions are essentially um, the actions of a government that does not care. So I, I really do help, hope that um, the different state officers that are watching this, that are uh, watching what's happening in, in Kibra and Mao and Gikomba and other places, um, come to their senses and actually call for a moratorium on evictions, um, at least for some clarity to emerge in terms of how do you resettle people, how do you relocate them, and at least give them the opportunity to be able to recover from what essentially is a traumatic uh, set of steps. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we couldn't get a representative from the National Land Commission. Of course, we extended our invitation to them. They couldn't grant us an interview. But many thanks, Irungo Houghton, for your input as the executive uh, director, Amnesty International. We also had lawyer Manuel Jose, and earlier I did speak to Shafi Hussein, who was the chairman from the Nubian Rights Forum. Of course, we'll be watching uh, the big story right here on KTN News. Many thanks for watching. My name is Joseph Ibrahim. Up next is KTN Prime.